Uh, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel, Child Moors. I want to be putting these into two videos together. One, I want to start with the Republican being a threat to safety and threatening school staff. And then I also so I want to be going over this Ethan Crumbly and the Crumbly family incident that happened in Oxford High School. So, Republicans that obviously do not give a care about your safety when making these death threats against schools, the school staff, the principal, the teachers, whatever it is, on um, whatever it is that the kids might be required to do, like wear masks or learn about how the, why we have LGBTQ rights or, you know, you know, whatever the case is. And you make those death threats and you want to be a threat to security and stuff, the FBI is going to monitor you of this. And... Um... You know, once you make that death threat, uh, you, you'll now be on the FBI watch and, uh, you'll be, uh, you'll be kept a big eye on, which, um, a lot of people don't like being kept watch on, especially if you're, you know, um, being kept an eye on, making sure that you didn't even do anything stupid, you know, like make death threats or, you know, threatened, thre threatening to commit suicide. And with the crumblies in jail, I will get into the, um, being on suicide watch. Because that's, um, that's another thing I want to discuss, but I'm going to get that later on in the video. So, the Republicans are going to have to have their eyes kept on by the FBI. And make sure that... The FBI is going to be making sure that, you know, security is, well, security is the top concern in the United States. So, so, I mean, nobody, nobody, um, makes somebody feel so not so secure. And get the way with it. And that stuff. If you're committing like, you know, some kind of, you know, murder, murder crime. And killing somebody. That's making somebody feel like less secure. And. That's where. That's where you become, that's where you become a big problem. And when you start to become a big threat, the FBI monitors you and then you have an 
you have an, a, a watchful eye kept on you and that stuff. There's like no escape after you, uh. After the FBI watches you and that stuff, you pretty much, uh. It, it's almost like you put your. Dreams of being a big um, terrorist um, dream, I sh American terrorist dream, I should say, and you have to like, you know, if you go forward with, you know, trying to, you know, be a big threat to everyone and that stuff, then you will suffer the consequence. And... That's how it will, if that's how you want it, and you want to be a big threat here in America, by going out there and killing whoever you think that deserves to die over our kids learning something, or the children, and you think you have an absolute right to, and I don't care if the uh, Constitution or you know, the rights say that, um, you have the right to bear arms, okay? Or, you know, some section of the Constitution say that you have the r absolute right for doing this. That's, that's an excuse. And you will, um, well, you're not going to have any luck making up excuses. When you commit a crime, you commit a crime. And then you have to answer for that. Now, let me go to the other part of the video that I want to be um, discussing with everyone here. Because this is also important. Ethan Crumbly. He has... He has been a big threat to um, people's safety as well. Now what I mean by that is... Ethan Crumbly has... Um, the day before the shooting... The day before the Oxford shooting... At the Oxford High School. Now I'm going to get into this story on this one. So, what happened was, Ethan Crumbly was in the high school, he was looking up ammunition on his phone for his, um, I got this note here, it says... I believe he would be looking up ammunition for his automatic, semi-automatic handgun. And what he was planning to do was look up ammunition so that he could ready the gun out there the next day. Or the day that shooting actually took place. So that it was like ready to go. And take the lives of four people. And injure seven others. That what was reported on, on NBC. Now when... He was looking up ammunition. The teacher caught him looking up ammunition. And there were text exchanged between Ethan Crumbly, Crumbly and 
Jennifer Crumbly. And can you imagine what was um, said? Most normal people would not even, you know, give them a, a um, the, uh, LOL. You need to, I'm not mad at you. You need to learn to not get caught. Okay. Okay. Um, that, 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 that tells me something right there. That tells me something right there. It says, that you are somebody that just doesn't care about if your son is uh, going to um, uh, be a um, a future terrorist or a future uh, murderer and that stuff. And maybe you're just maybe you're just plain bad. And maybe, maybe, maybe you should not have a kid at all. If you can't even, you know, raise your kid responsibly and, you know, uh, and, you know, be the parent that you're supposed to be and keep them out of trouble and that stuff, then maybe you shouldn't have them. And, yeah, I understand kids with just too much responsibility. I understand that completely. What I don't understand is when you have children and they're doing something bad and you first hear about it and that stuff instead of like promoting bad behavior um, why wouldn't you just do the complete opposite and say alright you know what I've got reports about you getting caught about you know being a future terrorist or a future school murderer and that stuff you need to have you need to stop this because you're making people feel like so um not secure and we're going to have a chat about this that's what should have happened but no it was the exchange of the message between ethan and jennifer crumbly and jennifer crumbly when she heard that her child Ethan Crumbly was looking up ammunition for his handheld gun which I just explained to you what kind of weapon it was his dad got Ethan Crumbly a handgun for Christmas and I imagine that he looked up ammunition so that he could so that he could um you know go out and you know just shoot people when the time came uh another incident that happened over there is when When the teacher passed by his desk a second time, she found a note. Maybe it wasn't the second time, but again, she passed by Ethan's desk some other day ago, or, you know, something like, I don't know, maybe a later date. She found a note on Ethan's desk and it was the drawing and and the report say that he was designing a video game a violent video game now inside edition had something pretty interesting i wanted to be looking at because because yeah this is uh gone on optimus as well and Obviously, he hates what the media 
He hates what the media does. And it's called Inside Edition. And they describe this kid as a normal... A normal kid in the neighborhood. This is seven years ago. Now, Inside Edition is showing this Ethan Crumbly seven years before the shooting. And it's a uh, call. Well, it's um, Ethan Crumbly uh, shows off his violent, rated, and for mature video game, including Grand Theft Auto. There was Grand Theft Auto. There was Battlefield 4. Tom, if you want to play that one, said Crumbly. And the other one, I don't know. I think he said, he said something about, I will be making another Nazi zombie video. And, you know, this, this kid was, like, you know, so out of control. He was, uh, he wasn't really that normal. So, um, yeah, little kids playing M for Mature games, I'm sure they're going to have, like, a lot of problems. And, by the way, um, when you keep listening to the voices in the, in the heads that, like, in these video games where they say, um, you know, like, have some bad language or, you know, they make, um, references or, you know, bad references or, you know, whatever the case is and that stuff, then they end up, you know, crazy psychotic messed up idiots would end up thinking like the video game does when there is some someone that says I will kill you all or I am death or you know they would end up thinking like how the character in the video game was messed up psychotic idiots I'm going to say that again and they um Start getting these, um, they, they start acting so dysfunctional and delusional and that stuff that they end up thinking like the, like the video game, that they start acting like what goes on in the video game and that stuff. And that is an example of what a messed up psychotic person would do. So the day before, he was listening to this voice that said, I am death. And then there, um, on uh, MSNBC, there was a, um, oh, yeah, this was actually Inside Edition. This was, um, Crumbly. Now in jail shows that there are, um, what appears to be security guards or, you know, police showing up the, at the Oxford High School. And this quote of Brian, or of, uh, Ethan Crumbly said the exact same thing that a character has said. I am death. See you tomorrow, Oxford. So, Ethan Crumbly's got, like, a bunch of problems. So, he is a 15-year-old. He is being charged for murder. And joining him is what his, pa what is his parents. And his parents had played a role in that as well. So, yeah, now these, um, now the Crumbly family is, um, in the same jail, but, but 
they are actually separated. They are not even allowed to have any contact with each other and that stuff. And Brian Long, or, and, uh, and the Crumblies are not allowed to have any contact with each other. They're in the same building, but they're separated, and they can't, you know, um, be around each other. They can't reunite with each other. And how sad is that? Or, or what's even more sad is that, um, Christmas is almost around the corner and that stuff, and you have to spend it in jail because of what you did. So, um, yeah, if I were you, um, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, I wouldn't be committing crimes, you know, like right around the holidays, because then you're just gonna spend your holidays in a jail cell. Which, which, it's sad. Which is sad. And most... And I'm gonna be honest with you. I would not even... Hey, any of the violent video games that I actually even play... Or, okay? Like, for example, the one I'm playing right now. Is shooting and killing fictional characters. Okay? Now... If I were... You know, making kill streaks in Fortnite. That stuff... I wouldn't go out there and, you know, start, you know, um, saving up some money, buying a gun, and then, you know, just playing, going out and killing people. No, I wouldn't even do that. Number one, I know it's a stinking felony, and, and, you know, I don't want to be, you know, waking up in a jail cell, and, you know, Having my jail cell be my bed for the next... Who knows how much years you actually spend in, uh... Jail. For... Committing murder. Who knows how many years it is. But I wouldn't even like it, depending on if it was like, you know, 20 or 30 or maybe even 50. It depends on what the judge would have gave me. Or, you know, what the police reports would tell me. Depending on that, that would determine how many years I'd have to stay in jail for murder. Nah, I would never, ever go out there and murder somebody and that stuff. And because I play video games that are violent, yes, and that stuff. Well, I have the, um, yeah, I have the common sense to know that whatever is done in a video game, such as violent as, you know, like, um... Oh, especially when it comes to, you know, guns or whatever and that stuff. I know that if you just gone out there and, you know, shot somebody in a video game and that stuff, uh, is, um, not supposed to be done in, a, in the real world. And the problem is, there are too many idiots out there that say that, uh, video games connect to reality, which is... Absolutely untrue. There's no connection with uh, video games to reality. I said that many times before in my videos and that stuff. And if you want to go back and you want to look at the times that I've said video games do not connect to reality at all. And that stuff. Then I encourage you to do that. Because. That's, that's the important thing people need to understand. 
there's no connection to the video game world and reality. There's none of that. So, yeah, just because Ethan Crumbly uh, quoted something off a of video game character and that stuff. Okay. Maybe people got the idea that, you know, oh, this guy's acting, you know, just based off of a video game and that stuff. Oh, so that's the proof right there. Okay. Um, no, it's not. It's not. Okay. Just because Ethan Crumbly said, I am death, just because he, uh, I don't know, defeated a boss that said that I am death, or maybe he was being such a good, um, Grand Theft Auto killer that I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he just said that because he wanted to make himself look like he was the, uh, Um, the, a, a real big, um, a real big powerful person. And maybe that's why he wanted to say that and actually look like he was a real big threat. Well, the, um, Attorney General, um, is looking into the investigation in the Oxford High School shooting. And the parents, being that they play a role, are spending their time in prison because of helping their child. Especially the father who helped, uh, who helped these, uh, the people, or his, um, son get a handgun and helped him purchase one. Which, at age 15, you can't purchase, um, firearms at that age. So, he got his self, uh, firearm for Christmas from his father, and that was the, I imagine, the same exact gun that he used to, uh, shoot people, the, uh, count was seven, no, no, it was four that died, seven more that were injured, so that is 11 right there, so, so, um, yeah, So, I'm going to read something here. Something that I've written up. Because this is important. I titled it, um, Ethan Crumbly's Plot. Ethan Crumbly's Shooting Plot. The Attorney General has quoted what was on that note. The note that Ethan Crumbly had on his desk was a drawing... A drawing with a semi-automatic handgun pointing out the words, The thoughts won't stop. Help me. A se another section of the drawing shows a bullet above it saying, Blood everywhere. Between the gun and the bullet was the drawing of a person who appeared to be shot twice and bleeding. And below that was a laughing emoji. And then further down the drawing was the word saying, My life is useless. And then there was Yeah, another part of the drawing said that the world is dead. This was the part of 
the whole plot of Ethan Crumbley's plot to murder people in Oxford High School in Michigan. So, there you have it. So, um, yeah, the Crumbleys are going to be spending their holidays, at least the next holidays for the next couple of years, I would imagine. They're going to spend it in jail. They won't have a reuniting with their, um, family for most of these, um, Easter's. And Thanksgivings and Christmas. Oh, even 4th of July. And they're going to have the stressful time in jail. And now these, um, the Crumbly family is, um, on suicide watch. They're being being kept in a watchful eye on 24-7 in their jail cells. And apparently Ethan Crumbly didn't get into any trouble over there in Oxford High. The school didn't punch the kid. Neither did the parents. The only thing that happened is when, is was um, Ethan Crumbly was allowed to return to class without any punishment. And James and Jennifer Crumbly went back, left the school without him. They didn't do anything to prevent what was coming. And look at the results. For ignoring their son for being a murderer they they got what they deserved so yeah that is that so yeah yeah big lesson um Yeah, this has been the, um, what this Chris Hayes has said on MSNBC was the 29th mass shooting. So, we've had a lot of mass shootings here in the United States, so it's not surprising that